Hello there and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to cover three string functions. These functions are left, right and mid. Later in the video I will show you when to use these functions and more importantly when to avoid using them. If you use them for the wrong type of task you can waste considerable time. I'm also going to show you a little known but powerful feature of the mid function, so make sure to keep watching. The purpose of these three functions is to extract a section of text from an existing string. So first of all, what is a string? Well, a string is a piece of text like this. We call the variable type string in VBA, and it is equivalent to text in a cell on a spreadsheet. So let's get started by setting up a simple sandbox that we can use to show the results of these string functions. First of all, we create the text variable and then we assign some text to it. Then we create a result variable which will contain the results of the functions that we are using. We start by assigning the result string to the text string without making any changes. Let's run this code by clicking in the sub and using F5. You can see that both strings were shown in the immediate window. So now that we have a sandbox in place, let's go ahead and use it to show how these functions work. So left is possibly the simplest function in VBA. It returns a given number of characters from the left of a string, and it requires the string and the number of characters you want to return. The key thing to remember is that the original string is not changed. We get the result of the function and we store it in a different string. The original string remains the same. So in the following example, we are going to return the first four characters of the string, which is Mary. You can see the result in the immediate window. If we change four to eight, you will see that the function now returns the first eight characters of the string. If we use a value greater than the length of the string, then the entire string is returned. For example, in this case, we use left 100 and you can see that the entire string has been returned. So that is the left function and you can see that it is pretty straightforward to use. Right is also very straightforward. It is very similar to left. The difference is that it extracts characters from the right side of the string rather than the left. So right takes the same parameters as left. It takes the string to extract from and the number of characters that you wish to extract. Let's change the code that we were using with left. We replace the left function with the right function. We set the length to 4. So let's run this code. And you can see that it returned the last 4 characters of the string. Let's try another example. This time we are changing the length to 11. Let's run this code. You can see that it returns the characters little lamb, which is the last 11 characters. So let's try one more thing. This time we're changing the length to 100, which is a number greater than the length of the entire string. So let's run this code. You can see that it returns the entire string. So anytime we supply a length that is greater than the length of the string, it will return the entire string. That is how we use the write function. So later in the video, we'll see how write is sometimes used with the in-string reverse function. So now let's take a look at the mid function. Mid extracts text from the middle of the string as the name employs. Mid is very similar to left. The main difference between mid and the left function is that mid has one more parameter. This parameter is used to specify where we start in the string. If we set the start position to 1, then mid works exactly the same as the left function. If we want to extract text from inside the string, then we can set the start parameter to the position from where we want to extract. Let's look at some examples so that we can understand it better and so that it's much clearer. In the first example, we use 1 as the start position and 4 as the length. This will produce the same result as using left with 4 as the length. Let's run the code and you can see that the result is the same as left with 4 as the length. To extract the word had, we set the start position to 6 and the length to 3. When we run the code you can see what the result is. We've got back the word had. Now we're going to extract little from this string. 
We set the start position to 12 and the length to 6. When we run the code you can see the result. Just like in the other two functions, if we use a length value greater than the length of the text remaining, then the entire string is returned. In this example, we use 5 of the star position and we're going to use 100 as the length, which is obviously longer than the length of the string. So we run the code and you can see the result is that we got back the full string. So one difference with mid and the other two functions is that we don't actually need to specify the length. This parameter is actually optional. If we don't include the length parameter, it will return the rest of the string from the starting position that we provided. So if we remove length from the previous example, so instead of having 100, we just don't have the parameter, you can see that it returns the rest of the string. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that mid has a little known feature. Well, now I'm going to show you what this feature is. So we can update the string using mid, whereas in the other functions, we just get back what we've extracted from the string. So how this works is that we specify the section of the string as normal with mid, but then we assign it to a new value. So the easiest way to understand this is by looking at some examples. Take this example. So when we run the code here, it will return Mary. So now if we take the same statement and put it on the left hand side and then we assign it to a value, whatever value we assign it to will replace Mary. So in this example we assign Jack. So let's comment out the result line to make it a bit clearer. Then we run the code and you can see that the string now has Jack instead of Mary. Let's look at another example. We'll replace lamb with foal using 19.4 in the mid function. Let's run this code you can see that the original string has been changed. So one important thing to keep in mind here is that we don't actually need to use length here. If we leave it out, then the mid function uses the length of the new text that we're assigning. So let's try the first example again without using any length. So when we run the code, you see it replaced Mary with Jack. Now let's change Jack to Andrew. Let's run the code again. And now you can see that six positions were replaced by Andrew. As you can see from these examples, there is no need to use length when using mid to assign. I can't think of a case where you would assign new text, but then not want to use that entire text length. One useful feature of the mid function is that it allows us to read through each character in a string. To do it is quite simple. So what we do is we create a for loop like this, we declare i as the variable for the loop. Then we write for i equals 1 to len text. So len is a function that provides the length of a string. So when we use made here to get the characters, we set i to be the start position, or in other words, the current character. And we set the length to be 1 as we are always returning one character. So in this example, we will store the return value each time in a string and then print it out to the immediate window. Let's run this code. You can see that it printed out each individual character. If we want to read the text in reverse, we simply change the start of the for loop. We swap the start and end of the loop and add step minus one. Let's clear the immediate window and let's run this code again. And now you can see that it printed out all the characters in reverse. So this shows us how we can read through each character in a string. Now that we have seen how to use these functions, the question is, when should we use these functions and when should we avoid using them? These functions work best with fixed strings. They don't work so well with variable strings. The reason is because it becomes very complex to use them with variable strings and there is an easier way to do it. Let's look at the two types of strings so that you have a better understanding of the difference between them. So fixed strings are where the text is always the same length and each field in the text is obviously always the same length. For example, take a look at the text strings here. The first two characters represent the transaction type, the next eight characters represent the date and the next six characters represent an amount. In this scenario, the strings will always be the same length and the fields will always have the same lengths and be in the same position. 
In some industries, this type of data is very common. We can use left, right and mid to extract data here as the positions never change. Variable strings or delimited strings are when the fields can be of any length. They are normally separated by some delimiter, the most common being a comma. So you'll see this commonly used in CSV files. If we want to extract from a delimited string with left, right or mid, then we must use the instring function to find the position in the string. When we get the position, we can then use it to retrieve the portion of the string that we want to extract. So let's look at some examples. Let's get the left field from this string using instring. We first of all use instring to find the position of the first comma and then we use left to extract. So let's run the code and you can see the result. So now we're going to extract from the right of the delimited string. You can see that it gets more complicated. In this case we use in string reverse to get the last comma in the string. So this is like in string except it searches back from the end of the string. When we get the position we then need to subtract this value from the length of the string. This is so that we have the number of characters that we need to extract using the write function. Let's run this code. You can see that the code worked fine, but it's beginning to get a bit more complex. Now, when we want to get other fields, it gets really messy indeed, as we have to keep track of our current position. So let's look at the code required to get the second word in a string. You can see that it's very messy indeed. We need to get the start position and we need to get the end position of each word. So we run the code, you can see that it works, but you can also see that the code is not simple and it will only get messier as we need to extract more words. So fortunately for us, there is an easier way. We can use the split function instead when dealing with the limited strings. And I'll be dealing with this in an upcoming video where I'll be using the split function and lots of examples and showing you how to split the limited strings. In today's video, we covered using the left, right and mid functions. These are very useful for extracting text from a fixed size string. We saw that the mid function has the added feature which allows us to replace text in a string. We also saw that the mid function can be used to read through the individual characters in a string. If you have any questions or comments about this video, then please add them below. And if you enjoyed the video, then please click on the like button. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you would like to get notified when my new videos are published, then please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon beside it. Now, if you'd like some more free Excel VBA resources, then check out my website, excelmacromastery.com. There are major articles on all the major areas of Excel VBA. Each article has an easy to navigate table of contents, as well as a quick guide that allows you to easily find the syntax you need. And there's tons of coding examples that you can copy and use in your own macros. You'll also find techniques that are not available anywhere else. I also have a VBA tutorial and in this tutorial, there's lots of activities and solutions so that you can try them all for yourself. And it's all absolutely free. So that's all for me and I hope to see you on my next video.